We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, those of us who are with us, and good evening and good morning to those of us who are joining online. Uh, thank you very much indeed for staying and joining this open mic taking stock session. And we only have one hour, so I, I will try, or we on the stage will try and be very brief and give the floor to the participants, both online and on site to give us a view of their impressions of this meeting, what we should also, what went well, what we should look into, and any suggestions for um, next year. Uh, just very quickly, um, once we've made our introductions, there are three mics here in the center, so if you do want to make an intervention, you can queue up behind any of the mics, and then we will um, call it per mic. Uh, the first mic closest is mic number one, then mic number two, and mic number three is the one at the end. And then we'll also give a chance for the online participants to also take. So we'll do it in a round robin-like fashion. Uh, so with that, um, let me just do a quick introduction to uh, the people who are here who will be listening and um, I was, and they will also say a few words before we start, uh, very, very brief remarks and then uh, we'll go on to the floor. So first, uh, starting from my right, I'd like to introduce the chair of the 2021 MAG, uh, Ms. Henriette Esterhuisen. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Shangatai. It's wonderful to see everyone here. I look forward to interesting and challenging and creative input. <laughs> thank you very much. And then there is Assistant Secretary General, Ms. Maria Francesca Spatilazzano. Hello, everyone, uh, online and uh, present here in this uh, IGF, 16th IGF, 2021 IGF. It's, it's really wonderful to hear all of you throughout the week. We try to follow all the sessions, but of course there is such a rich and diverse input. But today we have yet another opportunity and I am really looking forward to your feedback. Thank you. Thank you very much, Assistant Secretary General. And then we have online, we have our 2022 MAG Chair, uh, Mr. Paul Mitchell. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to join the discussion today. And I do want, uh, as part of my opening and remarks, just to thank Henriette for her stewardship of the MAG over the past year. And Riyadh and others have gone before have really nourished and shaped the IGF and given life to this multi-stakeholder ethos. And we owe them a debt of, of thanks. And I'm looking forward to what comes in the rest of this session. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. And then last and definitely not least, um, our MAG host country co-chair, uh, responsible for overseeing the arrangements and the reason why we have this beautiful meeting. Uh, Minister Christoph Schubert. Yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to be with you today. Uh, thank you very much for being with us uh, the whole week, and I'm really looking forward for your comments or suggestions. Thank you. Right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister Schubert. Um, okay, then we will open the floor. And uh, we have quite a tight schedule because we do have the closing session, which is also quite packed. So for the first one, please, yes, just stand next to the mic. And please, can you please introduce yourself? And then once you've introduced yourself, stakeholder group, uh, if you're talking in your personal capacity, and there is a 90-second timer, which I'm told will appear when you start speaking, so you have 90 seconds. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, 
First of all, uh, it's okay if I'm allowed to take my mask. 90 second, I question that. <laughs> okay, I'm Mayad Adil, doctor, human rights activist from Sudan. I speak on personal capacity. Uh, Sudan is the country that had a revolution inspired the world in 2019, but with the authoritarian rule of military leaders that have a long history of shutting down the internet. I have attended the sessions of this IGF Poland, and by the way, thank you so much for the great hospitality and well-organized forum. As I, I was saying, I've attended the sessions and noticed only a few speaks about government internet shutdowns. Obviously, it's not the favorable topic to be covered or favorably avoided, but it's a major dilemma. And I'm stressing on the fact that people's life was on stake due to those shutdowns, and allow me to explain why. In Sudan, ever since the telecom sector became controlled by the military leaders, the internet was suspended during the 3rd June massacre in 2019, right before Berlin, IGF 2019, and it was never addressed in those meetings. I attended personally. This shutdown that killed over than 100 peaceful protesters in Khartoum, and lots of missing people until now. Sudan experienced another internet shutdown this year, October 25th, uh, because of the military coup, during which another wave of human rights violations took place, killing over hundreds of people and leaving many wounded, all in order to prevent Sudanese people from documenting the military human rights violation. Sudanese people in the diaspora okay. use hashtags, a little bit. <laughs> Hashtag like blue for Sudan and keep eyes on Sudan to report and discuss internet shutdowns and, and call upon governments. Those social media campaigns okay. work to bring international community pressure no. upon okay. those military junta. Thank you. This is not exclusively happening in Sudan. Countries like Ethiopia, Togo. Okay, right. Thank you very much. Um, I would also like to just to point out that um, yes, we do understand that um, these are very serious issues and they need to be discussed. And we are a bottom-up, multi-stakeholder um, <coughs> forum. So yes, we we can discuss them, but we also try and refrain from naming and shaming as such. Uh, we would like to invite all stakeholders to, to come in from both sides and to hear all points of view. And you're, you're quite right, um, there should be a discussion um, with all the stakeholders um, involved. But you can pick it up for next year and uh, submit something. Can I comment, please? So um, I would like to commend you for making that point. I think it's absolutely vital. It has been addressed at the IGF, and in 2017 at the Geneva IGF, there was a main session on shutdowns. Mm. Um, shutdowns are mentioned in this year's IGF issue paper. And, and, and I think you're right, it hasn't emerged as strongly as it should have, but it has been there. And I think, I think the thing about shutdowns is, in fact, that, that, that it, it, they're not stopping. So I think, as Shengatai says, use the bottom-up process to put it back on as a main session next year. Um, so it's not that it hasn't been discussed. It, it is there. It, it just needs more emph emphasis. And I think let's use the bottom-up process for next year to make, and, and you have the MAG, you have the incoming MAG chair listening. Um, let's make this, again, a big issue next year as it was in 2017. And to some extent in Paris as well, in 2018, uh, it was also really profiled at the IGF. You write Berlin, not so much, but it's not that the IGF has avoided the issue. But thanks for, for raising, I'm from Africa, I feel very strongly with you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, can we have the next, please? Thank you very much. My name is Nenna. I come from the internet. I'm speaking on my personal behalf as a resource person to the IGF. This year, um, I'm thankful to Poland because they gave us meeting rooms and what I did was to book a one hour slot for mentoring. And what I found out is what I'd like to report at this time, that there are people who are still very new, very, very new to the IGF. I met a lot, some were MPs, some were participating remotely, and some were here on the ground. 
So I'd like to suggest that going forward, we might want to reach out to resource people who can hold mentorship sessions, especially for young people. And because I speak French, I was able to connect to a couple in Burkina Faso who could not make it to explain to them why they had problems attending. So once again, if possible, uh, the incoming chair, let's think of having resource people uh, serve as mentors, mentors and our slot here and there. Um, that's it for me. Thank you very much, Nena. Uh, the next we have online, uh, the Ghana Hub. Is it possible to give them the floor? We'll just give it a few more seconds. Mm -hmm. oh, hello. Yeah. My name is uh, Naode Ai from Ghana Communication Technology University. And I want to share my experience from the beginning of the summit to now. And I learned that IDF has the ambition to highlight the, the Polish view in the global debate on the future of digital space, building a space which enables sharing knowledge experience and best practices. As we all live in a digital world, we hope that our safety is assured. I want to commend IDF for their contribution to shaping global views on the internet governance and other related issues, and for giving access to all stakeholders, regardless of their age, occupation, and interest, to get involved in the work of IDF. And I believe with the challenges echoed by the various countries, it will be sorted as soon as possible. And to IDF, Africa is ready. Thank you for the good work you have done and what you're about to do in the next future. Thank you for putting the people first. Are you cool? Thank you very much, Thank Donna. You. Thank you. Um, next, microphone one. Thank you very much. My name is Carson Gabriel from Tanzania, and I'm also from the internet. No more silences. Digital rights are human rights too. Even when our voices shake, the internet has made us stronger to speak and let's speak freely. It is a multi-stakeholder approach and why do we still lack inclusion? I'm a testimony of the power of the internet, its might as well as its fragility. I have been casted as a dividend for having a voice and using the internet as a power. And also I have been celebrated for grooming and doing my part in selecting it. But what is the balance? Open, decentralized, and end-to-end. -end. These are the pillars of the internet. Yet, an internet connected is still an internet that's isolated. We are big on policy. It is time we put faces, narratives for this collective innovation through localization, ownership, and importantly, empathy driven with humanistic approaches. George Oliver said, who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. So think, who controls the internet? Is it truly democratic and should, be, should it be really used for control? Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Yes. Oh, hello. Um, my name is Cory Doctorow. I'm speaking in my personal capacity. I'm also from the internet. Um, I wanted to continue Dr. Adil's statement, uh, and she's kindly sent me a copy of it so that I can read the next 90 seconds into your record. Uh, Dr. Deal says, it is important to acknowledge that the UN considers cutting off internet access, regardless of the justification provided, including on the grounds of, of violating IP law, to be disproportionate, and thus a violation of Article 19, Paragraph 3 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. The, the UN also calls on all states to ensure that internet access is always maintained, including during times of political unrest which is, by the way, most of these countries uh, has signed a law by, uh, had signed a law binding treaties like the ICCPR and the Human Charter of Human and People's Rights. I believe that's to be UN Charter. We should all activate the function of those uh, law binding treaties 
uh, by work and function of it and then hold them accountable. Otherwise, the credibility of the UN will always be questionable. Therefore, why don't we see those major players here in one room when we talk about access to internet rights? Invitations should be extended to those government representatives and major telecoms com companies to attend the next IGF in Addis Ababa in 2022 to be confronted by, or at least have a dialogue with, the African youth IGF teams to make it a more relevant and political approach to reach consensus and reality-based solutions. Uh, I believe I'll yield my time there with seven seconds left, but if anyone wants to continue the doctor's statement, she's right here. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Corey. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> next online, we are back to the Ghana Hub. Good afternoon, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Edward Nanagoyo from Ghana Communication Technology University. I have some few questions here. How fast will our connectivity catch up if the rural areas and community is, is being connected? How possible will our, how possible will be, how possible will be our able to reduce online harassment such as hacking into people's accounts? And how will we know that the information we are getting on the internet are accurate? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for those uh, questions, and these are certainly good questions for us to reflect on and to discuss during the um, IGF intersessionally and also at the main meeting. Um, I will just go to Jorge Cancio, who's online again, because his hand was up before you came to the... Um, so, okay, Jorge, please. Hello. Hello. Do you? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Hello, everyone. And this is Jorge Cancio, uh, Swiss government. Uh, this time talking from Switzerland, where I went back after a couple of days there with you in Katowice. So first of all, I have to comment and thank the Polish government and the Polish uh, community for making uh, this hybrid IGF uh, possible. So huge uh, thanks to the hosts. Of course, also to the IGF secretariat, who has been working hard all this uh, the whole year, and uh, to the multi-stakeholder advisory committee for uh, leading on the program all of this in a, such a difficult situation. Uh, I think uh, we were all uh, waiting uh, for enjoying the possibility of face-to-face -face, uh, discussions and contacts. At least it has been possible for some of us during some of the time, but also the online exchanges have uh, worked wor uh, very well. And I think the IGF has taken this year uh, another great steps to adapt, innovate and reform and to get more relevant as the UN Secretary General was calling for. So I'm looking forward to further progress, to continue bridging uh, the gap between our discussions and the decision-making levels, uh, especially next year when we will be discussing also the global digital compact of the UN Secretary General and I hope that we may continue this path uh, as well as we did with Henriette Esterhuisen, with uh, Paul Mitchell as the new chair of the multi-stakeholder advisory group. So thanks very much from our side, from the Swiss government side and uh, be sure that we will continue supporting this important forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hoya. Please. Mm -hmm.
Thank you, Vittorio Bertola from Open Exchange, private sector. I apologize, I only have a very practical mundane comment on the structure of the format because, well, first of all, again, I think we should congratulate the MAG and the host country and all the staff here. They, they have worked hard for succeeding in holding the first ever hybrid IGF, not fully virtual, not mostly in person, and under such very difficult conditions. So I think we, we have to learn how to make this better. This was clearly the first attempt. And my feedback actually was that in, in many sessions here, it was harder to be the in-person participant. Mm. Actually, I think in-person participants often felt treated as second-class citizens with, okay. without offense. Because actually, in several sessions, I actually had to bring up my laptop and join the Zoom session just to be able to say, hey, I'm here, I would like to speak, because there was really no, no, no possibility for people in person to ask for the floor. And also, there were lo lots of interesting discussions going on in the chat, which we couldn't attend unless we joined it. So maybe it, it will be the way to go that even local participants have to join the online platform. But but we need to give some thought at that. And especially, please, please, I think you should consider using open technologies, open source technologies, rather than a closed platform like Zoom, which is also has proven to be also very insecure, as we saw yesterday. And especially the chat could be done through open standards so that we can actually make it accessible to people with all types of devices, technologies, and, and they are not forced to use Zoom as a client. And if there is no Zoom client for the platform, they're, they're lost. So uh, please work on this, and I think many people in the community would like to volunteer with the MAG to work on instruments and make this possible. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm Ponce Lightyear, um, Civil Society Collapse. My um, contribution for um, the, the new chair of the MAG, um, um, Paul New um, Michel, is to look towards a solution whereby we have a lot of MPs that have, have come here, and um, a lot of people don't, because there's a big um, disparity between people who really don't know their MPs, so whereby you, you can have a page for the next um, coming um, IGF whereby know your MPs, which MPs from which countries are there and what sessions they'll be attending so that local NRIs can be able to engage their MPs um, better and keep them informed in the, in, in the process. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Very good suggestions. Um, I don't see anybody in the Zoom online platform who wants the floor. Does anybody want the floor here? If not, yes. There's the microphone right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, good evening to all of you. I'm from Niger, so I will speak in French. Merci uh, à cette belle ville d'avoir organisé uh, cette belle rencontre d'Internet. Uh, tout à l'heure, il y a eu des interventions qui ont mis l'accent sur certains aspects qui manquaient. Et j'ai bien apprécié ce que uh, notre sœur du Soudan a dit. Uh, Internet est un cadre surtout aussi pour la jeunesse. Et uh, en pareille circonstance, il faut penser à tous les jeunes qui souffrent parce qu'ils n'ont pas d'éducation, parce qu'ils n'ont pas accès à l'eau, parce qu'ils n'ont pas accès à la sécurité alimentaire, parce qu'ils n'ont pas accès à la liberté de circuler dans le monde. Je parlerai par exemple de toutes les difficultés liées à la, aux migrations qui deviennent ces dernières années une véritable tragédie. Notre pays, euh, mon pays, vient d'évaluer son système d'Internet et euh, nous cherchons à mettre beaucoup l'accent sur les droits humains et euh, forcer aussi surtout euh, les autorités politiques à faire des efforts pour que les libertés individuelles et collectives soient respectées à travers l'Internet. Mais faire également en sorte que l'Internet soit un véritable outil de euh, développement. Donc euh, un excellent cadre euh, dont il faut améliorer les prestations en particulier à l'endroit de ceux qui vont être les piliers du développement du monde de demain. Merci à Katowice, merci au peuple polonais. polonais. Au revoir. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Judith. Hi, um, Judith Hellstein for the record. Uh, so, thanks so much for having this IGF. I thought it was excellent. 
Um, my question and comment is that I wish we would revise the criteria for the fellowships to the IGF. Um, currently, uh, people with disabilities or people from uh, civil society or others who happen to live in the U.S. or Europe and on a other developed countries are excluded from applying from the fellowships. And uh, other groups have changed their fellowships, such as the ICANN, to allow people with need or other areas to apply for the fellowships. And so I ask this as a question um, of you and thinking of hoping you can revise the fellowships for the upcoming year. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Judith. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the point is taken. Yes. Um, let's just go online. And I'm so sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name properly. And um, it's um, Fayo. From, from Myanmar. Yes. If we'll just give it a couple of seconds. Hello. So that, yes. Yes. Sorry, I, I just can't unmute myself. So, um, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Pio from Myanmar. And I would like to, uh, um, or I, I want the IGF to encourage the NRI, especially you uh, NRI, for uh, supporting, supporting uh, supporting uh, in their region to to initiate uh, the local NRI and then to connect with the uh, and then and uh, uh, guiding guiding the UNRI to 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 be able to connect with the uh, regional NRI as well and also uh, I would like to uh, request the. Um, uh, IGF uh, to support not only su not, uh, to support not only for the forum but also for the NRI sustainability as well. That is the uh, uh, that is uh, what I would like to uh, raise re uh, reach out to the IGF uh, regarding the new um, internet uh, activists uh, internet governance uh, uh, activists. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for your comment. Oh, we've got a line. This is very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please. Thank you, uh, Shengatai, for mm -hmm. giving me the floor. I'll be speaking in French. Mm -hmm. Mesdames et messieurs, chers collègues, j'aimerais tout d'abord profiter de cette occasion pour remercier le pays hôte et les organisateurs pour cet excellent IGF uh, qui, par la, de, la richesse des échanges qui ont été menés, a pu nourrir la réflexion sur la gouvernance de l'Internet et surtout montrer la pertinence de ce modèle multi-acteur dans la prise de décision sur les sujets numériques. Je voulais insister sur deux points. D'une part, la qualité du débat multi-acteur qui a été mené, mais aussi l'importance des langues et d'une diversité linguistique dans un forum comme le nôtre. Dans la dernière session, plénière sur les forums internet régionaux et nationaux, nous avons eu des interventions en anglais, en français, en arabe et en espagnol. Et ça a montré d'une part la richesse du forum et la capacité de renforcer l'inclusion numérique des communautés de par le monde. C'est aussi une preuve de la force de l'hybridation croisée qu'il y a entre ce forum ici à Katowice et en ligne, et les différents forums régionaux, nationaux de par le monde. Merci. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you a lot for the floor. Uh, my name is Katerina Bovsunovska, and I came here together with the delegation from the Youth Department of the Council of Europe. And first of all, I would like to say a huge thank you for organizing this forum 
and it was a great pleasure, pleasure to spend this week uh, full of uh, questions on governance, on global governance of these new technologies that already shape our everyday life. And as representatives of our like new generation of youth, uh, we always strive for engagement with policymakers, and we always want to not just to speak, but also to be listened and to be heard. And uh, that's why on one of the days of the forum, we had a meeting with uh, parliamentarians, in uh, particular with some members of the European Parliament where we shared our common concerns about uh, policy making on the European Union level. And we actually uh, enjoyed this uh, one hour meeting much more than a lot of other panel discussions because we heard much more engaged and we thought that um, next year's, if they bring IGF with more formats like that, would be much better for our generation to be um, heard and to be able to participate in policy making, at least on this discussions level. Thank you. All right. uh, thank you very much. Yes, uh, we have tried to make a very a marked effort since 2019 when we heard from the youth that they felt that they weren't really um, taken seriously at the IGF. So hopefully that has changed and you're seeing the improvement. <coughs> Okay. Um, next, we'll go online to um, Jenna. Thank you, sorry, take me some time to actually unmute myself. This is Jenna Fong from the Asia Pacific Youth RGF and I'm glad that I'll be able to connect remotely for another year to join Internet Governance Forum for my fir uh, fourth year. I appreciate all the effort in allowing people from different parts of the world to join in this meaningful forum remotely. It is incredible and I can see the effort of different parties and stakeholders involved in making this event happen. But I think we have been doing all this discussion remotely for almost two years now. And I believe it's almost time that we have to rethink our role in this internet governance community. I can see the effort of IGF Secretariat, NRI's and RL's effort in encouraging collaborations among all stakeholders in this critical time of the pandemic. But I believe what's more important at this point is to think about the meaningful participation beyond Zoom calls and more calls in the coming years because we have to seek out new ways and make it more sustainable if this pandemic it's not hap uh, not going to end in any time soon i believe with more resources or support from IGF and all other nris with all our powers, we will be able to make our participations even better than, than before in an old normal. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jenna. Uh, please, next. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're listening. My name is Lily Edinambuchi, and uh, I've had a lot of comments from people around the youth, people are speaking about the youth, and this would probably be picking back on what was said by the um, earlier speaker here, and also what he shared with us. It's my third time at the IGF, and over the years we've seen the increased participation of youth, and it's awesome. So the recommendation going forward from a youth perspective is to have the representation in the room and in sessions. Yesterday we had an awesome session speaking about digital skill sets and issues from around the globe and things that were really affecting young people. And in the room were only young people 
And so it, it just tells us, probably we are speaking to ourselves, maybe if our key takeaways and clear actions enter the bigger report, who knows, it may fly over our many heads and probably wouldn't get the attention that's needed. So how about we have some rationing or apportioning of people to be in sections, probably tag youth sessions, um, to pick information and probably to follow up on after the event, so that we don't have the information settling or circulating just among young people, but able to read the people that have the power to actually cause some change. So that's the point. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Lily. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, next, please. Uh, hello. Namaskar. My name is Professor Avinash, and I'm from India. Uh, this is my first IGF, and I'm attending this as a student. So my main research area is law and regulation of artificial intelligence and law. And law. So I have really learned a lot because after a, almost like one decade, I lived like a student, not as a teacher. I was attending sessions, learning new things. And my idea was that when we want to regulate internet or technology, then we need to learn something beyond the law. So this interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary discussions really helped me. And when I will go back to my law school, uh, I'm planning to start a center for internet governance. And I have like one or two suggestions for this forum. Uh, while we will talk about the rules regulation formation, then we need to invite judges also. Because in common law countries, high court and supreme court judges, they play a very important role to not only define and interpret the policies and rules and regulations, even they also create rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. So maybe in next IGF, if we can have some discussions and we can invite some jurists like the professors and high court and Supreme Court judges, that will be helpful for this discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think that is one of the... Um sections that we may be missing. So we will try and make some effort to that um, for next year as well. Jennifer. Thank you, Changatai, for giving me the floor. My name is Jennifer Chung. I'm going to be speaking on my personal capacity here. I want to express appreciation and also admiration for all the stakeholders, all the community members, all the people who connected into this hybrid IGF from the Asia Pacific region. I know it is traditionally very difficult for the Asia Pacific region to be able to participate fully in meetings that are scheduled around the globe. In fact, I did hear, I guess in the very first few days of the IGF, how difficult it was for them to be able to, to, to connect to sessions here as well. I want to express extreme appreciation uh, for our host country, Poland, for the IGF Secretariat, and of course for the MAG, and all the tech people here who have done incredible work and tirelessly trying to troubleshoot and fix all the bugs and fix all the things that we've been talking about to allow people to continue to connect. Like we heard from Theo earlier, she's connecting from Myanmar in a place that's very difficult right now. There are many people just like her in Asia Pacific who are trying their best to participate fully in these very important discussions. And I thank you all for allowing this to happen. Thank you very much, Jennifer. And yes, it is appreciated. Thank you. Ambassador Thomas <laughs> Schneider. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Yuan Jengatai. <laughs> um, first of all, of course, thanks uh, to our Polish hosts for uh, organizing an excellent meetings under very difficult circumstances, and of course, also everybody, the UN, uh, MAC Chair, uh, the Tech Envoy Office, the IGF Secretariat for uh, organizing this. I think we have seen that there is an enormous, incredible richness and experience <clears throat> around the world on these issues. But we have also seen the diversity of needs in different regions with people under different circumstances, and that the IGF is a unique forum where these voices can at least be heard, can express themselves. Um, the problem is that I think there's still a disconnect 
between these voices being expressed at the IGF and the decision makers in the big, powerful public or private uh, bodies that take decisions. And <clears throat> this is why we are happy to see that the Tech Envoy Office and the UN tries to go forward, tries to build a bridge with the leadership panel. We could have chosen another name, but that's not the point. So to create a bridge to make these voices heard. And my, my urge is to all those that think that this is going to be the end of the IGF. If we are serious and if we want, to, we want to make the voices heard, it's not enough just to have discussions at the IGF. We need people that transport these voices to those that make decisions. And we hope that the people in the leadership panel will earn the trust from the community that they will put their voices to the leaders and will earn the ear of the leaders. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, next, we'll go online and uh, Fred. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Shangatai, for giving me the opportunity to speak. Yes, uh, I am Fred Kwajo Azori, uh, speaking from Ghana. I'm uh, one of the IGF Youth Ambassadors for 2021. And I'm also the Ghana Technical and Projects Committee Chair for Internet Society. Uh, I, I particularly took interest in this year's IGF and uh, took part in most of the, uh, the preparatory sessions before the main IGF. And uh, I, I must commend the MAC team and the host country and the UN team that actually pulled this off. Uh, there were some challenges that came in, but uh, in the overall, I think this was awesome. But I must side with uh, Lily and some of the youth who actually raised concerns of the youth voices being added to the mainstreams. And uh, it was sad to know that one of the main sessions where we had a lot of the mug uh, in there, we couldn't find a youth uh, being part of the panel. And it is not only that alone, but quite a number of main sessions and plenary sessions, we couldn't find uh, a youth being part of the panel discussions. Yes, the youth were given a voice to speak, but I believe we can also consider putting the youth on some of these panels, at least one person to be able to contribute in that regard. Then uh, going forward, with the youth summit and uh, the other sessions that are given to the youth, I believe we can also equally put the, uh, merge the youth within the other sessions. So if we have a youth summit, we should also give some uh, elderly ones or the experienced ones an opportunity to be on the panel so that the voices that will be picked from there or the reports that will be coming out of the youth summit would also include voices from the experience, even though we name it a youth summit. And I believe this thank is you. the uh, way forward and it yeah. will help us. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for your comments, please. Uh, thank you, Chengetai and uh, the high table. Um, my name is Naza Nicholas from uh, Tanzania. And uh, before I proceed, I would like you to know one thing. You may be a very few people in the, uh, in the MAG and Secretariat, but uh, you are making a huge difference all over the world. That is one thing that I really want to you guys to know. And if the room uh, agrees with me, I think they can applaud you for one second. You are doing a very good job because by supporting the NRIs and uh, the the hubs, you are actually uh, making the change on the grassroots level. You are ensuring that uh, uh, the voices of people from the grassroots level are heard uh, at the, on, the, on the holes of the, um, of the, of the decision makers. So I thank you uh, for what you are doing. Uh, lastly, 
Uh, I would like to suggest one thing, that uh, the schools of internet governance are very critical to ensure that we bridge the young people to the understanding of the processes of the multi-stakeholder, as well as how to get into the IGF processes and all that. Uh, thank you so much, and I wish you a very good health. Thank you. Thank you, Naza. Thank you. Um, next, we'll go online to Anurag. Hello. Um, I am Anurag Aden, uh, and I'm one of the uh, Internet Society Youth Ambassadors for 2021. Um, I would like to speak from experience, personal experience and would like to say that I and express gratitude that uh, in my first IGF session, uh, one, of the most, uh, one of the most important aspects that, that I am advocating for, which is tribal and indigenous educational rights and, tri and internet mm -hmm. rights, was very much discussed in. And it was, so it was a pleasurable experience to in, engage in participation and engage in debate on what these means and what, and what role the youth can play in achieving uh, tribal literacy as well as tribal internet governance issues that should be brought up to the forefront as well. Going forward, I would also like to stress that as this pandemic has taught, we are, we are stronger when we are together. So we should, going forward, we should not forget that tribal issues and indigenous issues, uh, especially related to internet governance and internet accessibility should not be forgotten, should be not be forgotten and they should be kept in mind because internet is for all and so is governance as well. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. I think I will now just close the queues. Uh, we won't add anybody else because we really have to keep on time, but uh, we'll go to the second mic now. Merci. Bonsoir à tous. Je m'appelle Kossi Amesinou. Je viens du Bénin. Je remercie le Pays Haute et le MAG pour le travail formidable qui a été fait pour nous permettre de tenir ce TGF 2021. Malgré la pandémie, tout s'est bien passé. Mais je voudrais nous poser une question. Nous avons constaté ensemble qu'il y a eu des participations à distance, mais avec beaucoup de défis linguistiques. Comment devons-nous faire pour que chaque citoyen du monde puisse prendre part à l'IGF dans sa langue. À défaut de le faire dans sa langue, que les langues reconnues par les Nations Unies soient tous utilisées dans l'IGF. Nous avons eu, malheureusement, autour de ce IGF, pratiquement une seule salle où la traduction ait été possible. Nous devions travailler à ce que cela change pour les années à venir. Nous avions eu des représentants de haut niveau, des parlementaires, des ministres qui sont arrivés à ce forum. Pour moi, le, la session Open Mic est une occasion pour nos décideurs. Pouvez-nous dire les engagements qu'ils prennent pour que l'Internet ne continue pas d'être un luxe dans les pays dits pauvres et en développement Chaque citoyen du monde doit avoir accès à Internet pour son bien, travailler, s'éduquer et prendre soin de lui. Merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, I'll just comment on this one. Uh, usually we don't comment, but yes, um, we do hear you and it is one of the issues that we really do struggle with because it is a resource allocation issue. Uh, what we spend the resources on, if we take from one end we, to give to, to, to another end, um, so it's, it's a balance and we do have a MAG working group that is working on it and trying to find what is the right balance um, for this, but uh, thank you. Uh, please. Hi everyone, thank you Shangata. Uh, my name is Jose Fisaha. I am the focal point of Youth IEF Africa and generic coordinator of Chad Youth IEF. Talking about internet governance in a global way, why in the countries of the south we still talk about accessibility while in the countries of the north we talk about internet and artificial intelligence, internet and economic growth, internet and sustainable development goals, etc. How to ensure that balance and equity in terms of internet governance? Another problem at the regulatory level. The internet has become a business in Africa. What to do? Consumers pay daily for its access. 
but the quality has never been satisfactory. The COVID pandemic has proven to us that the digital divide has affected the young people more. We are over 50% of the world's population, but never have our voices formally considered among the actors of the internet governance ecosystem. The future of tomorrow is our future. We must be considerate and involved in making big decision process. Open question to you decision makers. What is the benefit of making laws but without being able to force their applications? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, next, we'll go online. Ah, okay. Thank you very much, Shengtai. Uh, my name is Auke Aukepals from the Netherlands, and I want to express my congratulations to the host with the great way of organizing this conference in hybrid matter, in especially these difficult times, and also making it able to be uh, be there physically. I was l last week uh, were in Poland, and uh, now from home, uh, work still great, and it gave this hybrid format really a boost for people all around the world to. Uh, speak up and be engaged. Moreover, also the session quality was great this year with a diverse mix. Uh, unfortunately, we also had recurring themes uh, like on the human rights uh, topics, uh, but also great new topics um, on artificial intelligence. So I think the IGF is really, uh, this IGF really gave a quality boost and I hope that, to see that continuing in the next years. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Okay. Um, the far mic, please. Uh, thanks, Shintai. Uh, my name is Walter Natris, and I represent the Internet Standards, Security and Safety Coalition. And hereby, I announce our new name. Um, that what I wanted to talk about is, first, we saw a tremendous youth program this year. And I, I'm very glad to say that we, as the Dynamic Coalition, will be working together with them very soon on education and skills. So we're going to develop where they are at this point together. What I would like to share is that the work that Serena has done in the Dynamic Coalition Working Group is literally tremendous. And the support that we as Dynamic Coalition has got is very, 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 very well pleased received. So for Serena, big applause because she really did a tremendous job. The topic that we were able, sorry, yes, applause please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what we were very concerned about how the Dynamic Coalitions would work into the IGF Plus and the fact that we had UN DESA and the Tech and Voice Office on the stage in our in our session was also very well received by the Dynamic Coalitions. Finally, I think uh, the Polish host did a great job and I was very happy to see old friends and made new friends. And in this way, hope that we will be able to do this in a normal way next year with everybody on board and zero. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Wood. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Paweł Urgacz. I would like to say a few words on behalf of someone who represents the host country and someone who was born and raised in Katowice. Uh, thank you very much to all of you who decided to come here and be with us in person and to all of you who join us online as well. Uh, a few remarks. Uh, um, I was so happy to see, as I'm representing the Academy, I was so happy to see so many young people uh, involved in different activities uh, within the IGF this year. Uh, so I hope and I wish to IGF to have more and more young people that do care for the next events. Uh, these few days I had a lot of very good discussions and I really hope that they will turn into a real cooperation in the future for, for some good projects. And the third remark on the side is I can assure you that we have a really nice summer in Poland. So you are more than welcome to come again to Katowice in summer. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. And I do believe him, there is a very nice summer in Poland. <laughs> Please. Bonsoir tout le monde. 
Euh, je vais parler en français. Moi, c'est Nathanael Thierry Copia du Burkina Faso. Alors, tout d'abord, je voudrais remercier les Nations Unies pour ce panel qui nous permet de parler autour de la gouvernance de l'Internet. Merci aux pays hôtes. Euh, je voulais soulever une préoccupation, mais déjà, il y a Dr Kossi qui l'a soulevé. Il s'agit des barrières linguistiques. Alors, euh, IGF est censé être vraiment un, un forum international où toutes les parties présentes peuvent venir de n'importe où dans le monde entier. C'est-à-dire, c'est de prévoir vraiment à ce que toute personne qui puisse participer puisse comprendre ce que c'est que l'IGF, ce qui se passe, et même les panels. Alors, ça déjà, c'est de voir, même les documents qui vont venir après, qui puissent être traduits en plusieurs langues, pour nous permettre de mieux comprendre, parce que tout le temps, nous sommes obligés de faire des efforts pour pouvoir euh, traduire, et puis voilà, ce n'est pas évident. Bon, la deuxième préoccupation, c'était aussi de voir, pour impliquer au maximum les gouvernements. Parce que ici, c'est vrai, on se retrouve, on parle de la gouvernance, mais nous, qui sommes de la société civile, quand nous repartons, on ne peut rien faire sans l'implication de ces gouvernements-là. Des lois peuvent être dictées ici, peuvent être proposées ici. Toutes les propositions qui ont été faites doivent être entendues et transmises à ces personnes-là qui, qui ont le pouvoir de décision dans nos différents pays. Alors, c'est de les impliquer au mieux pour que le message puisse passer, pour qu'on puisse vraiment atteindre cette intégration de l'Internet partout dans le monde entier. Merci. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. And also, I have noticed two people have joined the queue. Uh, we had closed the queue because we, we really have to be on time, so sorry. <laughs> But please go. <laughs> But, um, I have to be strict because if I am not, then it goes on and on. So sorry about that. <laughs> please. Well. Thank you for giving me the floor for the final comment. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Aidan Ferdelin, and I just wanted to echo the earlier comments by Jennifer Chung and O.K. Pauls, expressing admiration and thanks to Poland, to the MAG, to the Secretariat, and to everyone in this room who has participated in good faith this week in all of the discussions. Thank you. It's been an excellent session, and I've been very glad to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for those who couldn't make it onto the queue, uh, please, um, we will have a, a call for comments and you can submit your comments in and we will take them um, into account. And we're also going to take these into account as well. We have the recording, we have the transcript, we are taking notes and they will act as an input document to the first MAG meeting for the 2022 MAG. So um, thank you for that. So now we will just go over to um, comments. Uh, from the podium about what they have just heard. Uh, just quickly, yes. Um, thank you, um, Shanyatai. Um, thank you, everyone, um, for, for, for the comments. Um, I think, as Thomas said, the, the needs are diverse, and I think for the IGF to meet those needs is challenging. And the language barriers are real. The, the barriers of, of the diversity of voices is real. And, and, and finding ways of bringing all of that together meaningfully is, is difficult. I think clearly what stands out for me is making information available about what is being discussed at the IGF. That needs to be done more effectively. For example, the internet shutdown issue, it was discussed, but maybe it was difficult to find out how. Similarly, the different regional uh, priorities uh, might not stand out. There was an attempt this year to use a wiki to map the issues to the workshops. I think it should be built on. Um, I think also, um, What, what really stands out for me is, is and this is maybe my closing um, comments before I thank the host, is that we need to not lose the fact that the IGF is there to have a space for controversial issues to be discussed. People don't come to the IGF just because they want to be part of positive action. They also come to the IGF because they have challenges, because they do not have access, because they do not have human rights on the internet, because they don't feel they are able to influence policy in their national or regional environments. And I think if we lose the IJF as a space for engaging um, those areas of conflict and tension, 
Commission will lose the value of the IGF. So, but my final remarks, I really want to thank the host country. They've been remarkable. Uh, they supported the virtual IGF in 2020 as well. And, and just really, they held nothing back in terms of trying to make this a successful event. They've been incredibly cooperative, worked with the MAG, so thank you to Christoph and Chemek and Michal and Anna, the entire team, to Victor, who's been phenomenal. And I want to thank the MAG, the, the 2021 MAG, really had a challenging task, and they worked hard under very difficult conditions. So it's been a privilege for me to work with them, and um, just, I wish them all the best going forward. And the Secretariat, thanks for your incredible work. Uh, you are a really amazing team. And, um, and I feel this year we've had the addition of Maria Francesca and her team. And um, I really want to thank them also for becoming part of this process and adding their perspectives and linking the IGF to the digital cooperation process through that. So thanks very much and thanks to everyone. Carry on coming back. And, and make the IGF meaningful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Assistant Secretary General. Puis je parle en français. May I use uh, French? We, yes. Give everybody the time to yeah. tune in if you have a device. Mais je voudrais dire quelques mots en français, parce que c'est vrai, les langues des Nations Unies sont plusieurs, et pas seulement l'anglais. Maintenant, sur Internet, vous trouvez surtout l'anglais, évidemment. Donc, ça, c'est un peu obligé, quelque part, pour nous tous, d'utiliser de, de cette langue plus que d'autres. Mais on va essayer, on va faire un effort, et je vous remercie pour avoir souligné cet aspect. Et maintenant, je vais utiliser l'anglais aussi. <rire> The, the suggestions we heard are diverse and very good, and uh, I have noted, you know, some practical ones, why don't you use this device rather than another one, and some others which are more about the themes. So we will take them in and uh, use it best as we can for when we devise the, the future uh, versions of the future years of the IGF. Let me, uh, of course, thank the, the chair, the outgoing chair that has been uh, a force of the nature for the IGF and will continue, I'm sure, to lend us her knowledge and support and welcome the incoming chair who is virtually with us somewhere and the host country for the wonderful uh, uh, support and uh, incredible uh, strength you have shown in these circumstances. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then we'll just quickly go to um, Paul Mitchell, the uh, incoming MAG chair, just to have very quick observations, and then we'll move on. And if possible, can we just cut the chime? I know we're a little bit over time, but We'll just make it quickly, thanks. Mm. Uh, Paul? Mm. Uh, Paul, we can't hear you for some reason. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, really wanting to understand um, what people are feeling and looking forward to working with the community going forward. I'm sorry, Paul, we didn't quite hear that, but um, can you start again? See, uh, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Like Verizon commercial from the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I align myself with, uh, with Henriette's summary. I think it, this discussion has really indicated the, both the promise and the peril that uh, we all look forward for uh, in terms of keeping the internet free and open, but building upon uh, the foundation that we have done so well so far to make it really much more inclusive than the other parts of the world where it's not inclusive to address the inequities and to continue to, to build upon um, the work that's been done. I'm in listening mode for the next little while and really very much want to understand the views of the community. So this has been a very valuable session for me. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Minister Schubert, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your comments. As we are running out of time, I will cover some of the points during the, um, the closing ceremony. But I would like to use this opportunity and officially thank the person I've been working with last year extensively and the person behind the coordination of the IGF 2021 agenda, Ms. Uh, Henriette Enzelhausen, the MAC Chair 2021. <laughs> I wish I could take these flowers home with me. <laughs> um, Christopher, it was a pleasure. You were fantastic, you were charming, you were efficient, and it was, it, I, I really enjoyed working Thank with you. you. And you and your team, it was wonderful. Thanks yes. so much. Thank you. Okay, with that, and since we are five minutes over time, uh, we will close this session and I'd just like to thank everybody for coming. Thank you everybody for being online, waking up early in the morning or staying late online. And a very big thank you to the MAG and to the MAG chair. It was really great working with you and also with somebody from <laughs> my home region. And of course, we will continue to be working together as we've been before um, you joined the MAG. So we'll, we, we will continue. Thank you. Thank you.